Man, it sucks this weekend. There's no Diablo 4. Well, the experience over the early and open betas does make me excited for the launch in June, and the best part was being able to play the game with my wife. I encouraged her to try it out and she briefly liked it. She even said that the game was so addicting. I mean, she wasn't really looking forward to trying the beta, but by the end, we were both excited with the prospect of being able to travel together in Sanctuary on launch. The betas were really good, but there were some things that D4 could work on, like the network issues, which kind of got really bad during the open beta, and maybe the game could add more features like loadouts, but overall the experience was pretty great. Sure, barbarians and druids could get some love, especially when the summary of stats were posted by Blizzard. I mean, is it really a surprise that Sorks and Necros were the most favored classes? I mean, it's really just nuts the way they can just smash through content. Left and right, it was nothing basically for them. My wife switched to a sorcerer, and she really just wished she went for it immediately as opposed to going for the rogue class. Rod Ferguson, the executive producer for Diablo 4, did give ideas that the other classes would eventually be more, shall we say, fleshed out as they progress, so I'm guessing that means beyond level 25, So, or at least having access to the other class-specific quests which enable certain class abilities, so that's good to hear. I will most likely run through a rogue class again on launch, but the other classes I'm looking forward to, at least one of the other classes I'm looking forward to is the Druid. I'm really looking forward to a more balanced feel of content clearing for all the classes. In any case, there were some really fun aspects in the betas. First is just really the visual atmosphere. It's dark enough that it gives you the feel of the original Diablo game, but paired with current technologies. I'm not putting down D3, but the tone in Diablo 4 is really so much better without leaning towards the horror-type design choices. Not only does it match the theme of the story, but it's very much well done in an isometric view, or at least a game that's in the isometric view. To add, some of the stories are really dark for a game that has quite the huge following, and that's just great. It really fits into the grimness of the world of Sanctuary and this little battle or uh, lover spat, <laughs> I would call it lover spat, between Inarius and Lilith. The second thing is really just being able to transmog your gear from the onset. Now, one of the things I really dislike in playable characters that you can see right in front of you is the mismatch in color for clothing or the armor or basically just your characters not having the right look. In Blizzards of the Game, World of Warcraft, I spend a lot, and I do mean a lot of time, mogging the look of my characters. In fact, I take advantage of the feature in any game that offers it, so if it's there, I go ahead and try to use the feature. So it's good that you don't have to settle for whatever color or armor piece you get in D4, or at least if you're having a rough time in leveling, which is rarely the case in any class anyway, um, at least you'll have the right look, or at least the look will be bearable. Combat is another aspect that's really top-notch in Diablo 4. I don't know, and it could just be me, but it doesn't feel like you're swarmed as much as in previous Diablo games, but it also doesn't feel like a Souls formula where you only battle it out with a few at a time. It's a good mix of the you versus horde uh, setup while being very intentional. In addition, not once did I feel like I wasn't clear on what was happening in the heat of a fight. I mean, this is from a visual aspect. Visual and combat design are very much well done where you don't feel lost when you're in the middle of combat. In the combat scenarios though, and these random events that we get, yeah, they can feel a bit samey-samey, but I'm hoping that's just because we were restricted to only one zone in the beta. So I'm hoping that uh, post level 25 or when other areas open up, I'm hoping for a little bit more variety in terms of the events we get. The side quests are also really nice, and mainly because they're not one-offs. As you progress your character, you get updates on the NPCs that give you quests, and you, well, you get to progress their individual stories as well. This is good, as it gives you a feeling that the world of the NPCs around you is also progressing. I'm hoping this continues later on in the later chapters, and maybe ties into the main storyline in some shape or form eventually. I mean, I'm just hoping it just isn't limited to one zone, these side stories that you're getting, and maybe it, it leads to something bigger, something grander, or at least offers more from a lore perspective. On the open world format, I initially had my doubts about it, but it really just worked. It's great being able to share events or basically just see other players running around. 
it reminds me of recent games like Lost Ark and the, well, not so good Diablo Immortal. Being able to jump into events and do a world boss with others is just great. I do feel, and it just might be me, I do feel that it could be better. I wonder if they're implementing the phasing technology like in World of Warcraft. I mean, if they are, I hope that they increase the player count per instance outside of events and world boss encounters. And the last thing that's great about D4 is how less of a grind it is if you decide to run with alts. I mean, the previous Diablo games, you could share your items with your other characters and it holds for D4. What's also great is that a good amount of the rewards are realm wide. So if you unlock rewards for a Sork while you were running a Barbarian, it's not a problem as you eventually get it for your alt. This really helps ease your secondary characters in, or at least your secondary classes into the game. The same thing applies if you level a Necro and decide that you'd rather main a Druid. You still have to run through story content, but at least some gold or at least gold, some rewards and bonuses are already waiting for your other character. And that's it really for the best things that I've found in the beta. And I'll still say it sucks that June can't get here any faster. I'm hoping they surprise us with a playable weekend between now and launch. I mean, Diablo 4 has a lot of good things going for it based on what we've experienced so far. And I'm sure a lot of people will be jumping into Sanctuary when launch day gets here. Anyway, thanks for checking this out, guys. I'll talk to you soon.